Hello, in this video, we're going to evaluate limits using method five. Now, method five is using limits uh, with common denominators. So, we're going to, it's because in the previous videos, we've been simplifying limits using factoring uh, conjugates. Now, we're going to deal with when we have too many fractions and we need to get rid of them. So, let's take a look at our first example. In this example, we have the limit as x approaches 0 of 3 over x minus 3 over x squared plus x. Now let's try method 1, where we just plug in x equals 0 and see what we get. Um, so if we plug in 0, we're going to get 3 over 0 minus 3 over, well, 0 again. Now that's undefined. It's Both of these are undefined. All right, so 3 over 0, that's undefined and then also 3 over 0. So we have an undefined minus an undefined, which doesn't really tell us anything. Plus, we really can't deal with 3 over 0 in the first place, um, especially an undefined minus an undefined. So method 1 is not going to work. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a common denominator, which means that I have two, to, I have two fractions. I think we can all agree on that. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a common denominator to make this one big fraction, and then we'll see what we get. The first step is to see what fractions we do have, or uh, what our denominators are, I should say. So uh, we're going to get 3 over x, so our, we have a denominator here of x. And then I'm going to factor this fraction. So now you can actually see that they both share a common denominator, all right? Um, so this one has the x plus 1. This one does not, so I'm going to multiply top and bottom by x plus 1. So we got the limit still as x approaches 0, 3 over x. And now what I'm going to do is multiply top and bottom by x plus 1 over x plus 1. And then we finish off. We got 3 over x, x plus 1. So now we have a common denominator, right? They both have the same one. Uh, what I'm going to do is distribute the 3 here. So that's going to give us 3x plus 3 over the denominator, the common denominator. Now, what I'm hoping you see is at this point, you're going to have a 3x plus 3, and then you're going to immediately subtract 3. So when we simplify this piece, we're going to get 3x over x, x plus 1. Uh, now, but before we move on, I want to come back up here. Why are we having a problem in the first place is because of this x, right? And you also have that same denominator of x in the other fraction. So because of that x, that gives us the problem. We want to get rid of this x. Now we can, because they both have an x top and bottom. So we cancel those out. And we have 3 over x plus 1. And now we can plug in x equals 0. And we're going to get 3 over 0 plus 1. So that's 3. And so our limit is 3. In this example, we have the limit as x approaches a of, and we have 4x over x plus 5 minus another fraction all over x minus a. So let's see what happens when we plug in a. So we're going to get 4a over a plus 5, that's fine, minus 4a over a plus 5 all over a minus a. So on the top, you can actually see that I have two identical terms. So when I subtract them, I'm going to get 0. And on the bottom, same thing. A minus A is 0. So we get that A over, or 0 over 0 case, which means we have to do something. And that something is to basically deal with the two fractions that are on top. I want to turn this one into a one, one big fraction where I have like some terms on top over some terms on the bottom. But I don't want two fractions. I don't want fractions on top of other fractions. Okay, So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply top and bottom by the common denominator. Now it's 
again, it's the numerator that I want to deal with, and the common denominator on the numerator is x plus 5 and a plus 5. Worst case scenario, I'm not sure if you've known this before, but worst case scenario, if you're trying to find a common denominator between two fractions, the product of those two denominators is a common denominator. Okay, so I'm going to multiply top and bottom by that. All right, so let's go ahead and multiply that out. <clears throat> Notice that when you take this term and you multiply it on to here, the x plus 5s are going to cancel. And that's going to leave just the a plus 5 with the 4x. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to get 4x, a plus 5. Again, the x minus 5s will cancel. Minus. 4a, and again, when you multiply this on top of that fraction, the a plus 5s will cancel. So you're going to be left with 4a with an x plus 5 all over. Now, just like in all the other examples, don't uh, distribute all this stuff out. Just leave it alone. Plus, my goal is to get rid of this x minus a, because that's what's given a 0 on the bottom. All right, let's go ahead and distribute out everything on the top. So we're going to get 4xa plus 20x minus 4ax minus 20a all over. We get x minus a, x plus 5 and a plus 5. All right, so what happens is you can see on the numerator, these two cancel, which is good. Uh, and we're left with the 20x and the 20a. So 20x minus 20a. And again, on the bottom, we don't do anything, so we just rewrite that same denominator. Okay, so what can we do with 20x minus 20a? I can factor out 20. So we get 20x minus a. That's great because there is my x minus a that's going to cancel with that x minus a. All right, so let's keep going. And x minus a, x plus 5, a plus 5. Okay, so let's go ahead now and get rid of the x minus a's. And we have left a 20 on top, an x plus 5, and an a plus 5. So now if I plug in x equals a, we're going to get 20 over a plus 5 another a plus 5, and that gives me 20 over a plus 5 squared. And so that is my limit. All right, here's an example for you. Uh, I made it a little bit tricky. I think you're going to have to use two methods. Uh, so give it a shot. And to find the solution to this problem and more information about NIU, please visit the link down below. Good luck.